Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at building this very simple application you see here. And this is a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And if you haven't done any software programming previously, I encourage you to look at my beginners series on C Sharp. You can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, and this video, we're going to build this simple application. What this is doing is you can see over here on the right, I have a smartphone mounted on a bracket looking outside a window. And this application is allowing us to grab in real time that streaming video. And the video is coming over my Wi-Fi. Here I've got just a uh, USB cable to power the smartphone. But the video is coming over Wi-Fi in real time. And you can see it here. This is real time video. Maybe you can see the leaves rustling a little bit. But um, this is a really nice application similar to a video we did recently showing another library that we use in uh, C Sharp Visual Studio. This library we're going to look at today is something a bit more simple. And you can see here the application has got a um, streaming video down the bottom. It's got a combo box where you can select multiple sources. Now I've got a separate smartphone that is also streaming video over Wi-Fi in real time. And I can select that to be displayed. So what I can do is go to this combo box, go down to the other webcam, start it. And automatically it's now streaming live video from my other smartphone over Wi-Fi. So really nice um, functionality in this application. It's really very, very simple. Uh, one reason I'm showing this is because this is quite a bit simpler than the other library we used previously called EMGUCV. And this library we're going to use in this video is called AForge. And here is the website, aforgenet.com. And it's got a lot of information. One thing that you need to be aware of is if you go here, look at downloads, and it's got the downloads. You can also get, we're going to use NuGet to get the, the software. But this um, latest version is 2.25. If you look at the release notes, that was released in 2013. So at the time of making this video, it's about 10 years old. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not useful. It's very simple and very useful. It does a lot of stuff. But if you need more functionality, you can look at our previous video with using EMGUCV. Now, one thing to mention is in order for this application to recognize my webcams, my smartphones over Wi-Fi, I need to have some software running on the smartphone and on this desktop. And we did a video previously showing what that software is. It's called IRIUN Webcam. And it converts your streaming video over Wi-Fi into a webcam that you can recognize. So you need to have that running both on the smartphone and also on your desktop. And again, I encourage you to look at the other videos where we do that. So here is the application. You can see it's basically got a picture box, which is showing the streaming video. It's got a combo box where you can select the source and then a start and stop button. And that's about it. So let's go into Visual Studio C Sharp Windows Forms and build this application from scratch to show you how to do it. So here we are in Visual Studio 2022, and I'm going to create a new project. And it's a Windows Forms.net framework. Hit Next. And we're going to call it A Forge Test Solution. We're using .NET Framework 4.7.2. Create. So here is our blank solution. We're going to click on the form and hit F7 to look at the code. And here's the code. First thing I'll do is right click, remove and sort usings to get rid of the unused using statements. And what we're going to do first is we're going to set up this form as we had previously. So we know we're going to have to add a picture box to display the streaming video. So we'll go here and go to picture box and drag it to fit. And we know we're going to need a combo box to display the sources. So here is our combo box. Now I'm also going to rename this combo box to CMB Video Source. And we're going to need two buttons. 
We're going to have a start and a stop button. And I'm going to call this BTN start. And I'm going to change the font to size 12. And I'm going to change the text to say start. And I'm going to right click on that, copy and paste. And now we've got our stop button. And I'll rename that BTN stop. And I'll change this to stop. So now what we can do is generate the event handlers for these two buttons. So I'll double click on this and go back, double click on the stop. And now we've got our basic framework for our application. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to download some libraries for AForge. So we're going to go into Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. And we'll go into Browse. And we will type A-F-O-R-G-E. And we will search. And here you can see we've got AForge by AForge.net. 3.6 million downloads. So we're going to download that. We're going to select that, latest stable, and install. And we're going to select the package reference in project file instead of packages.config. Hit OK. And we're also going to have to download Direct Show. So select that, install, and it's installed. So now we are going to do some using statements using a forge and using a forge dot video dot direct show. So that should set us up. Now what we can do is we can add some code. Now the first thing I want to do is add a couple of private variables up here and I will use filter info collection. This is going to generate a list of devices that we can select from in the combo box. And we're going to call it video devices list. We're also going to define an AForge video source, an I video source. It's an interface. We're going to call it video source. Now in the form one, the initialize, I'm going to add this code and you can just copy and paste it. What we're defining first is we're getting a list of video devices. We're using this filter info collection, which is a video devices list. And we're saying the video devices list, the list of video devices, and we're instantiating a new filter info collection. And in here, we're going to say filter category video input device. So that's going to give us a list of devices. And then we can add all the available video devices that it gets to the combo box. We can list them out for the user to select. So we go for each filter info video device in video devices list. We're stepping through each one of these. We're adding that uh, video device to our combo box. So com combo box video source dot items dot add the video device dot name. That's a parameter, a string parameter of the video device. Now we can also select the zeroth video device in the combo box as the default video device. So if there are devices in this combo box, so if combo video source dot items dot count is greater than zero, then we're going to automatically select device zero. So we'll say combo video source dot selected index is zero. So it will display the zeroth item. If there's nothing in there, we're going to get a message box that says no video source is found. And we're going to use these parameters, message box buttons dot OK, message box icon dot error. And now we're going to subscribe an event handler that we're going to build to a this dot closing event. So when you close the form, it's automatically going to stop the video source. So to do that, this dot closing is the event plus equals form one underscore closing. And that's the event we're going to generate. So whenever the, the we close the form, it's going to go to this event and it's going to make sure everything's shut down correctly. So I'll copy and paste that event handler. And it's private void form one underscore closing object sender comma cancel event args e. So now it recognizes that. And all it does, if there's a video source that is running, then stop it. So if video source 
isn't equal to null and video source is running, then we are going to use the um, aforge video source dot signal to stop. And that just tells the whatever video source to stop, right? So it shuts it down. Pretty straightforward. Now there's one other event handler we need to generate. And that is whenever the video source sends out a new frame to us, we need to handle it and put it into the picture box. And to do that, we have a private void video underscore new frame, object sender new frame event args called event args. And all this does is for every new frame from the video capture device, we clone it, we copy it, and then convert it to a bitmap so it can be displayed in the picture box. So we define a bitmap called bitmap, and we are saying event evenargs.frame.clone and converting that to a bitmap. So it's basically cloning that frame, converting to a bitmap called bitmap, and then we're displaying it in the picture box. We're saying picture box one dot image equals bitmap. So that's about it. Now we just have to do the start and stop buttons and we should be all set. So for the start button event handler, uh, we're first going to choose the video source selected in the combo box as a new AForge video capture device. And to do it, we're going to say that the video source that we defined up here video source and I video source video source equals new video capture device and we're going to use this video devices we've got that list we generated before from the combo box and we're going to say combo box video source dot selected index so whatever selected in the combo box dot moniker string and that is going to give us the selected video source and then we are going to subscribe our new frame event handler that we generated to the video sources new frame event. So video source dot new frame, the event for the video source, we're going to subscribe our new new frame event handler called video underscore new frame, which is this event handler. So we're just subscribing to the new frame event. And then we're doing a video source dot start which basically just starts the AFORGE video source. And then it's going to, all the control is going to go to the new frame event that's going to go into this video new frame event handler. So really that's it. Um, you just define a video source, subscribe to the event handler and start it. And now this is going to run and just generate images into the picture box. And the last thing we have to do is in this button stop, event handler. We're going to tell the video capture device to stop and we're going to say video source dot signal to stop and that's just going to turn off the video device or tell it to stop sending and then we're going to release all the resources associated with the picture box image. So if the video source is not null, if there is a video source and it's running and picture box one image is not equal null, so there's an image in the picture box, then we're going to do picturebox1.image.dispose. Um, so now, hopefully, we should be able to run this and get some video streaming. So here we are. We've got the Arian webcam. We're going to start it. And there you go. You've got the streaming video coming into our application. And we can stop that. And we can go to the other webcam, start it. And it goes to our... Um, bench cam. Now, of course, um, it would be nice if we could resize this form and have the picture box scale. To do that, all we have to do is go in here and set the anchors. Right now, it's just to top left. And what we want to do is set it to all four, and that will anchor it as we move it. And then we also want the image, the picture box image, size mode to be zoom instead of normal. So we'll select zoom. And now we run it and start. And now we can zoom it. And the picture sizes correctly. Of course, we need to do the same for the combo box and the buttons. But you can see we're pretty much all set. Everything works. And it was really very simple. So if you want to learn more about Wi-Fi and developing applications, I encourage you to look at some of the other videos we've done. 
Um, if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.